Diagnosis and management of carpal bone dysfunction can be performed in a variety of ways and should be considered in patients who present with various symptoms, especially symptoms of hand or wrist pain and carpal tunnel syndrome. A common clinical presentation, the classic symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome are paresthesia, numbness, or burning in the thumb and lateral two and a half digits. If compression of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel is not alleviated, Wasting of the thenar eminence can occur along with weakness of the thumb. The carpal tunnel is made up of the transverse carpal ligament on the anterior surface and the carpal bones on the posterior surface. The transverse carpal ligament runs from the hamate and pisiform bones medially to the scaphoid and trapezium laterally. The carpal tunnel contains 10 structures, four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus, four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis, the flexor pollicis longus tendon, and the median nerve, which is the most sensitive structure. The causes of carpal tunnel syndrome are multifactorial, but is generally a compression of the median nerve. Changes in the anatomy of the carpal tunnel, such as a lunate dislocation, can lead to increased pressures within the tunnel and compression of the median nerve. Addressing somatic dysfunction of the carpal bones is important regardless of the underlying cause of the carpal tunnel syndrome. Somatic dysfunctions of the wrist are related to a restriction of the gliding motions of the individual carpal bones and the carpal bones on the radius. Carpal bones can be displaced towards the palm, therefore narrowing the carpal tunnel and contributing to congestion or compression on the median nerve. Improving the motion of the carpal bones and encouraging the proper alignment increases space in the carpal tunnel, decreases the pressure on the median nerve, and increases axoplasmic blood and lymphatic flow to the area. There are multiple ways to diagnose somatic dysfunction of the carpal bones. One way is to perform a general assessment of the motion between the carpal bones by taking the wrist into flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. In addition, minor motion glides can be useful for identification of carpal restriction. As the motions can be quite subtle, comparison with the unaffected limb can also be helpful. The carpal mobilization technique addresses carpal bone restriction of motion in any direction. With the patient in the supine position with a pronated forearm, the patient's palm facing the ground, the physician places their thumb pads on the proximal carpal row while their fingertips are in contact with the thenar and hypothenar eminences of the affected hand. The physician then brings the wrist through full flexion and extension while adding radial and ulnar gliding. An important component of the treatment is when the wrist is brought into full extension, the physician's fingers apply lateral traction to the thenar and hypothenar eminences and simultaneously apply a distraction pressure to gently separate the carpal bones. Gentle articulation is often appreciated by the patient and physician. The physician reassesses by examining the carpal bone motion after treatment. While the treatment in this video focuses on somatic dysfunction of the wrist region, the osteopathic approach to treating a patient with carpal tunnel syndrome is typically much broader. Diagnosis and treatment should address other areas of potential somatic dysfunction, particularly along the course of the nerve from spinal root levels through the distal neurotomes. This should be especially focused on areas of potential neural entrapment and other key areas including the cervical and thoracic spine, thoracic inlet region, the first ribs, scalene muscles, and clavicle, pec minor and upper rib cage, shoulder, elbow, and forearm. There are multiple diagnostic and treatment techniques to address carpal bone somatic dysfunctions as they relate to carpal tunnel syndrome. The technique presented in this video is directed at the management of restricted motion between the carpal bones as part of a complete treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome.